Hi guys, I'm Jim, and yeah, I'm still battling this flu. And this is Jim's Fix It Shop. And right now we're going to adjust the clutch cable, hook up, and adjust the brake cable. Pretty simple. Um, I guess the best way is just to show you how to do it. So hang on and I'll move the camera down there. Okay, now on these single pedal machines, they still have two cables. They saved about four feet of cable and one pedal by switching over. This large cable right here that you can see with this ferrule crushed onto it is your clutch. This smaller cable here with this, I don't know if I can reach it from the other side and stay out of your way, it has a, this little this little black plastic clamp that slides on the cable. How this works is when you push your clutch in this cable will come up and catch this black clamp and that will slide up and grab the end of the brake cable that has a ferrule crushed on it that applies a brake. So what you want to do is adjust the clutch first then the brake. But there are some variables. <clears throat> so when you get this all adjusted and you say you have to put a new belt on your mower. When you adjust it up here, there's a clamp up here on this tube that you loosen and you slide this tube in and out. That's what tightens the belt on your mower deck. When you do that, you're changing the length of the cable. So you have to readjust the clutch again. Unless you luck out and there's enough movement in there where it doesn't mess up your clutch pedal. But let's go up here and I'll show you how I get that adjusted. Let's see if I can turn this. You can see the, no you can't, let me tip this camera down. Here is the yoke. Now when I get this adjusted, the clutch adjusted the way I want it, this yoke will be laying horizontal or flat. Right now it's tipped down. If I pull this hard enough, now it's tipped up. I want it to be level. That lets the chain case slide through it with less friction, I guess, on this slot if you have this leveled out. So let's put a clamp on the pedal. Okay, I just put an adjustable clamp on this clutch pedal and I watch the yoke to see when I get it flat. A little more. Right about there. Now, if the clutch pedal is about halfway down, which it is, that's adjusted okay. Now, how you adjust the clutch, let me, let me see if I can make you motion sick here. On the back side of this pedal, where the cable comes through, there's a whole bunch of ferrules. Um, there's five of them on this one. Now, if the clutch pedal is about halfway down and your yoke is tipped one way or the other, adjust these ferrules. You can pull them through the clutch pedal. And you just let them ride on the cable right here. They won't go anywhere because on this cable, right in here behind this frame, they crushed another ferrule on the cable. So they're just going to slide right here and they won't go all the way down the tube like some models do. So we got that adjusted. Now we want to go down here and work on the brake cable.
Okay, I happen to have Tim's book, which helps out a lot. And we're on page 29. And it shows you this little thing here is what they're talking about. It has a spring inside. This is the end of the brake cable. And they're talking about that right here. And when your brake is all the way down into park, I'll show you how to apply that. You want three quarters of an inch between the end of the cable and the end of this plastic tube. And how I measure that is I'm a machinist and we have these little, we call them scales. They're just a very thin ruler that goes up to six inches. It'll slide right in here past this cutter key. You don't want to take this cutter key out because there's a big spring in there and it's going to pop out at you. But right now in the relaxed position, we have a quarter of an inch. So we want to pull that down to three quarters. Now to hook this thing up, the cable comes off the back of the machine. It goes between the differential and the bracket that goes to the chain case for shifting. Personally, I think it ought to go on the other side, but hey, what do I know? Get this nut started on here so it's out of my way. And you can't see a thing. Now on this brake lever, there's a hole and a slot. The slot is to slide the cable through. Then you pull it up and you pull a little plastic neck into the hole in the brake cable. Then you can take your nut off and get that back out of your way. You And it's got the same up here. you got a hole with a slot in it. Just stretch this up. You're compressing that spring. Slide the cable in and drop the threaded part into the hole. And you can start this nut to get it out of your way. Now when I took this apart, I didn't move this top nut. So in theory, we stood, stood, <laughs> we should still be adjusted. Now, let me reach over here. What holds this plastic thing in is a C-clip and or a snap ring. We have to stretch it open a little bit to get it around the cable. Then we can take the pliers out, turn it, put the pliers back in. Now we have to stretch it over open and push it down over top that plastic brake assembly. And that goes on just like that. Now, to set your brake to get your distance right, well, that's going to be fun. It don't really go up in there very good. I'm going to have to bend it. we got to set the brake and park. Let me move the camera over here. I probably should have paused that for you. To set the brake in park, you want to take the clamp off. You got to push the brake pedal all the way to the floor, slide the parking lock over, and then let up on the pedal. This machine, when you have it shifted, most machines have a park position on the shifter. This does not. It has a neutral position. So when the machine's shut off, you've got it in neutral, you can push it around your garage anywhere you want it. If you stop out in your yard on a hill, you have to set your parking brake or it's going to roll down the hill when you get off it. So you want to pull the pedal all the way down and push push that pin over that holds the pedal. Now, if we didn't mess up and that nut didn't turn on me, 
I should have three quarters of an inch. Let's go down and see what we have. Okay, if we can get the scale up in there and I can read it without getting in the way. I have about three-eighths of an inch. So either the brake was never adjusted right or it moved on me when I had it just hanging. So we want to to tighten it up, you screw this screw down this adjusting shaft. That's going to put more pressure on that spring. And see where we're at at this point. I got about a half an inch. Now let's check that again. I got about five eighths. Got to be getting close pretty quick. <clears throat> that looks pretty good to me. And now we want to screw the bottom nut up and tighten that. That will jam it together and it shouldn't change our adjustment. And that's all we have to do for that. Okay, now what I want to do is get these back tires back on this poor thing. And it does make a difference which one goes on which side. This one has a three-quarter inch hole in it. And this one has a... What is an inch and an eighth because of the difference in diameter of the axles. So let's see which way that goes through there. It's so one of these holes in this hub is larger than the other. To accommodate the tapered head on these goofy bolts that they use. You know what? I'm not going to put that on yet. I think I'm going to goo this thing up with some NICs. So when it comes time to take this off again, we'll be able to get it off. Oh, slides on a lot better. Find a hole there for the bolt to go through. self-locking nuts sometimes 
are pretty hard to get started. And then we can slide this hubcap back on. And basically, just do the same thing on this side. This is wonderful stuff. It really keeps stuff from rusting up and setting so you can't get it apart when you need to. My boss might actually get this thing back one of these days. And that's that one. And I'm Missing a hubcap someplace. Okay, found that pesky hubcap hiding underneath the tire on this side. We're going to tip it down. We're going to get the seat on, the gas tank on, and uh, then maybe we'll slide the deck under and get that hooked up. We'll see how much time we ate up. Well, let's tip this down. been a while since that sat on its tires and we'll see if we can get that seat on and of course the safety switch and the safety switches are for the uh, the mower deck and that safety cable so you can't shift it reverse uh, I hate safety things let me move the camera and we'll try to get the seat on Okay, to get the seat on, this one is adjustable, but it also has no spring to it. The older ones had a big spring piece of steel on here that gave you a little bit better ride. These do not. They have a couple of nuts on here you have to take off. Now these are self-locking nuts. You don't tighten them all the way up. They have to be able to slide in these slots so you can adjust the seat. We'll snap on the safety switch wires. Take the knobs off.
And you gotta try to get all four of them wiggly bolts through them holes. Alright. The knobs on the front are simple enough to go on. And they are carriage bolts that snap into a square hole so you don't have to worry about the bolt turning on you. You can get your finger in there to hold it down so it stays in that square hole. Now these back nuts have to go on and just snug them up. If you tighten them too tight, the seat won't be able to adjust. And again, you gotta try to get your finger in there to hold that bolt head down. Which is a lot easier said than done. That's the basic idea. Let me pause you while I fight with these bolts. Okay, when I get the back two bolts in and tightened, um, I had to go in there with a screwdriver because my fingers aren't skinny enough to get in there and hold that head down. I snug them up. I back them off a half a turn. That allows them to slide. So you can adjust the seat wherever you want it. Then to tighten the seat, you use these knobs up front. That tightens the seat up. Next thing we want to do is put the gas tank back on. Grab me a little wrench here because these are in kind of tight. <clears throat> now on the older snappers, um, the gas tanks had a vent built into the cover. And I have had some people have trouble with them little vents in the cover on the gas tank plugging up. My neighbor, he said, I can't figure out what's wrong with my snapper. It'll run for about 10 minutes and it quits. 20, 30 minutes later, start right up, run great for 10 minutes. Well, he figured it out. It was his vent was plugged. So he just drilled a tiny little hole alongside of it. I think he used a 64th drill bit. Never had a problem after that. These new covers are sealed. They even click like your car does so you know you got it on tight. The tank vents through this little thing everybody calls a mouse trap. It's an environmentally safe vent for the gas fumes. Go figure. So we're going to put this on next. And we can hook it back up to the carburetor. Feed door gas line down through that hole. And put them two bolts back in. been easier putting the gas tank on first and then trying to do the seat or putting the seat on first and doing gas tank. That's one of them things where they're both in your way. I think it was easier to put the seat on first. Tighten these two bolts up. Now this particular machine, this bracket holds the gas tank on. The older machines 
had a spot in the seat bracket that the gas tank just snapped into and that was it. I forgot to take that up. But it's starting to look like something again. So that's it. We've got the seat back on, we got the gas tank back on. That's not bad to sit on either. Uh, the only thing we got left is put the mower deck on and uh, try to get this thing back out this door and get it back over to my boss's house. I, wait, I can hear him smiling right now. <laughs> so if you guys got any questions or comments, Put them in that little box below, and uh, maybe everybody can benefit from your question and my answers. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. It really does help um, other people find my channel. And something in the last video I was going to do and I forgot on this gear lube. It looks like this bottle holds a hundred milliliters and we use 500. So a quart of this stuff will either do two machines or next year or in two years from now when you drain your differential and chain case, you can fill it back up with new stuff. But like I said, this stuff holds up a long time. This is the 8090 gear lube that came out of my 16 year old blazer. And as you can see, it is still very liquidy. Is that even a word? I don't. And I know if this was in this thing, it would be getting lubricated properly. And that's what I'm striving for is get some longevity out of these things and make them last as long as we can. Because I know some of you guys out there still have some of the original comments. Parts are getting hard to find, but you can still get them. So don't forget to subscribe. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. That helps spread them around too. And until next time, work safe, have fun tinkering, and I got to go out and suck leaves again. We'll talk to you soon.